you feel a pop in your back during a squat? This can be a classic sign of a disc herniation, especially if the next day it was hard to stand up straight or you couldn't even do that and you had to crawl to the bathroom. Well, my name is Dr. Grant Elliott and people around the world come to us in the same situation every single week. And we've helped thousands with disc herniations and satica fully recover through our one-on-one -on -one online coaching program. And in this episode, I'm gonna tell you why this happens, how to recover fast through our three-step process, and most importantly, how to prevent it from happening again in the future. So why does this happen? What is the actual pop noise that you feel or hear? Many classic disc herniations happen when squatting or deadlifting, and you are either maxed out with weight, or you are to a point of fatigue where you are no longer moving properly in the lift. Your back may or may not fall into a flexed position, but will often feel something give out, and feel or hear a pop. What's said to cause this pop is the inner disc material called the nucleus pulposus is pushing into or through the outer layer called the annulus fibrosus, at which point the disc might be pushing into sensitive tissues, or pushing directly onto a nerve, resulting in static nerve pain traveling down into the glute, thigh, calf, or foot. Any leg symptoms from a nerve could feel like numbness, tingling, tight pulling, burning, or electric shock. And typically the day after a disc herniation, the individual will have some hallmark signs like difficulty standing up straight after getting out of bed or bending forward or sitting a long time at work or in the car. Now a disc injury doesn't always have to be with a heavy lift. We've had clients who are quite strong where this happened while they were getting on or off a toilet, off the couch, bending over to pick something light off the ground, or various other scenarios where they might have not expected it. Regardless of how this happened, you don't want to be stuck with the pain or do the wrong exercises, ended up getting worse and getting pushed towards drugs, injections, or surgery, especially since 97% of people with disc herniations can recover without surgery if they have the right rehab plan. And this statistic comes from a massive study that looked at almost 280,000 people with lumbar disc herniations. Hey, real quick, I know you're struggling with pain and obviously want to fix it. So if you just text me the word pain to 317-751-9509, I will send you my free back pain fix demo. Just text that number and you can fix your pain. Thank me later. Back to the show. So here's our three-step process we have used to help over 1,000 people with disc herniations start the best recovery process. Step one, we need to calm down the lower back muscles, calm down the nervous system, and start to build proper support around the spine. And you may be shocked to hear that this can be accomplished through a proper breathing exercise. So lay down on your back, bend your knees. Bending knees helps relax your abdominal wall, and helps neutralize your lower back to take pressure off of the disc and joints. Put one hand on your chest, one hand on your belly. Now, as we take deep breaths, focus on only moving the bottom hand on your belly and not moving the top hand. This will help teach you proper belly breathing and really utilizing your diaphragm the way it was meant to be. As you inhale, your belly should expand and your hand should rise. And as you exhale, the hand should fall. This is actually difficult for many people as many people are not breathing the right ways. But learning this can help downregulate your nervous system, calm down low back muscles, and help this immediately begin to melt away. Now we are going to increase some core activation and improve stability of the spine so we can begin to move better, feel safer with less pain. Now in that same position, you are just learning proper breathing. I want you to expand the belly with air, hold that pressure down in the belly, and now raise one leg off the ground at a time, alternating each side. Make sure you keep your lower back flat into the floor as you do this to help your core activate the most. This is gonna help you develop and learn how to control what is called intra-abdominal pressure. Intra-abdominal pressure is an expansion of the pressure in the abdominal cavity in 360 degrees. This is what supports the spine from the front. We have all those back muscles in the back that everyone believes needs to be the strongest to support the spine from the back, but what supports it from the front? Intra-abdominal pressure does. So you want to have equal pressure and equal stability around the entire spine. This is huge for anyone who is into running or weightlifting or really any type of exercise to be not only the strongest, but to move the best way as well and support your spine. Step three, now we are ready to start working the disc. See, if we know the disc has been pushed backwards and is hitting sensitive nerve or tissues, this typically results in a flexion intolerant disc that doesn't like bending forward as described in this video. So a key way to start moving the disc back where it came from is by doing the opposite motion but first, laying down on your stomach to take gravity off of the spine. Get used to this position first, just laying flat, and then rest up on your elbows like you're reading a book or texting on your phone. This will take pressure off of the disc, but start to help it slowly migrate, move, and be loaded back the direction it came from. My best recommendation for most people is to then start performing this movement for repetitions, gently going up 
and down as you get used to it. Eventually over time, and this journey can look very different for different people, eventually working up to your hands and slowly pushing further and further into this motion as your body allows you to and as pain goes down. This is a classic disc herniation and sataka exercise, but it can look very different for different people and many people need different prescriptions of what to progress through next because this is just a starting point. So you need to know what comes next. However, for many, this three-step process will provide huge initial pain reduction and mobility improvement. Now the real long-term results depends on what you do next. Progression to these movements, increasing load to the disc, and building up the capacity of your spine in all ranges must follow in order to truly resolve a disc herniation in a way that it'll never occur again, and you can live a highly active life pain-free. These steps and stages you must progress through can look a little bit different for each person, since everyone with disc herniations can have different symptoms and different different starting points and different goals in their journey. So if you would like a clear idea to what the proper steps and stages should look like for you, I have a free opportunity that you need to take advantage of since we have helped thousands go through this process and I know we can help you too. Just text me the word pain to 317-751-9509 to get a tailored step-by-step -step plan to permanently fix your back or satika issues using my centralization process. Do it right now so you don't miss the opportunity to finally beat this pain and live the life you deserve. We look forward to helping you and please like the video subscribe if you haven't already join my facebook group rehab fix low back program for more free content resources and guides thank you so much for watching i'll see you on the next one